Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to take on a Shimano. It's the Trinidad 12A. It's a uh, star drag reel. It's a high speed reel, a 6.3 to 1. Uh, this one came in with a series of reels from a local boat captain. Just asked me to get him tuned up prior to the season starting. And that's what we're going to do for him. So uh, let's get started. It's a nice little reel. I believe it's an aluminum based uh, frame. And uh, there does seem to be a sign or two of corrosion on this. And uh, we'll see if we can't take care of that. We need a little bit bigger screwdriver there. You want to match your screwdrivers to the screw head. If there's a small slot, use a smaller screwdriver. If there's a wide slot, go ahead and use the wider one. But don't put a, a narrow bladed screwdriver into a wide slot. You'll only have a chance of uh, scarring it up. Okay, the lock cap is off. I'm going to use an 11 millimeter nut then to remove the handle. And interestingly enough, the handle is probably the first part of service. So let's go ahead and do the handle. This is a little bit different than most. Uh, this handle has two screws on it. And it's hiding a ball bearing in there that actually does get oiled. So we'll, uh, we're going to remove that screw, the two of them. Then there should be a little cap underneath this and then a little ball bearing. And uh, a couple of things while we're going through some of the preliminaries here. We, uh, we want to note that I wear a protective glove. And that protective glove uh, keeps junk off my hands. Uh, you can see the ball bearing in here. I'm not going to go ahead and take the whole knob off. But the ball bearing is down below. I'm going to use some oil. So that protective glove goes a long way towards... Uh, keeping contamination and, and dirt and junk and grime and so on uh, from the reel uh, off your hands, so I recommend that. I also recommend that you use a parch tray. You'll see that in the background there, even though I didn't use it for this. And uh, finally, what I would recommend is that you uh, take pictures along the way so that if you remove something like this and you have a little trouble putting it back, you can go ahead and take a look, make sure that you have it in the right place. So there you go. You've oiled the first part and taken care of that bit of maintenance there. It's uh, a lot of these do have handle. A lot of these handles do have a, um, a bearing in them, but they're difficult to access. In this case, uh, this one actually gives you that opportunity to do that. Uh, it makes uh, keeping that handle knob turning nice and easily. Oh, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting these holes aligned. I have to press down, I think, to seat that properly. Then that little micro screwdriver here to kind of turn it up. There we go. So, uh, in this case, I, I kind of like the feature. A lot of folks don't realize that bearing is there and can be serviced, so go ahead and do that. It'll uh, make your cranking a little bit easier. And we're just going to go ahead and, after we do that, we're going to put that into a parts tray here where we have some of the other pieces already. And one of the things I told you, I told you to take pictures, but I didn't tell you, if you're not familiar with the reel, go ahead and pull a schematic on this. These are available online. I got this one from Mike's Real Repair, uh, dot com. Uh It's the Shimano, it's the 12A, which is what we're going to be working on, and it gives you a layout for all those pieces and parts. So uh, I encourage you, if, you, uh, if you're working on that, go ahead and uh, take that off. Okay, the, uh, the handle comes off, uh, the, the star adjuster comes off. There's some stuff under here. couple of these shim washers. There's a little um, clip here that holds another one underneath here. You don't need to do anything with these other than keep them in the sequence that they came off in. And again, if you had any question at all about how they came off, uh, go ahead and go take a look at those for uh, reassembly. Next up is a, a spring that holds the tension to that. And then we have the backup now you can do this two ways. You can grab a wrench and back it off, or you can just go ahead and put the, the original cap back on. 
in this case I'm just going to back it off here and again note the sequence as these come off and you can see these in a uh, in that schematic if you got lost so top nut now there's two sides of that nut notice that there's a cup here that holds the spring a little groove so make sure when you go to reinstall that that groove is facing upward then we have a series of tension washers I like to just stack that and these just going to put in another section of my tray stacked up the way they go back on and then we um, we're free on this case then. So next up then is the case. There's one, two, three, four screws that are holding the case on. So let's get those off. Now these on the initial blush, they look like they're Phillips heads. I imagine that's a special machine tool that they use, but it's really a flat bladed screwdriver that takes these out. So uh, if you're trying with a, a um, Phillips head and you're not having any success, move over to the flat bladed and here's an example of where that uh, uh, that slot is just a little bit wider than the blade. Just be careful if, you, if that's where you're going. If you don't have the exact fit, just be careful as you take those out not to widen the slot there by yanking around too much. And what I also do with these, I take these and I lay them on my bench when they come off. I want to make sure that all of these screws are the same size. If they're not the same size, then I want to go back and note where the shorter or the longer screw came out of so that when we go to reassemble, it's in the right place. Right now we have two that are the same size. It's not that uncommon for a manufacturer to Put a small screw in because I have a narrow uh, point on the case. Just be aware of it. Uh, it can drive you nuts if you just take these and start putting them into the basket and then uh, coming back out and going nuts because one of the screws was shorter. Okay, so they have a little Loctite on the bottom of these. That's why it's a little bit of an effort to break that seal, but once you do good that, I see the cap is coming off already so okay all four side plate screws are the same so they can go into my parts tray and I like the parts tray because it keeps all those pieces and parts in one central place so that when I go to reinstall I have them this is already pressing out so you're just going to hold on to that and just gently lift off the top will give you access to the gearing on the back end of this we want to make sure everything is clean this one's pretty clean. Uh, there's a little bit of dried grease up top here, so now's the time to do the house cleaning with that. I'm just gonna use that same little uh, screwdriver I used for that uh, micro screw on the front end for the handle, just to get that, some of that dried grease off. And then I can go to a cotton swab and clean up the rest of that. And I apologize for my voice, I've been suffering a little bit of uh, sore throat, laryngitis, something going on there, but uh, overall, hopefully it doesn't take away from the message here. Alright, I'm going to drop some oil in behind that uh, lever release. I'm also going to notice where that lever re release is, so that when I go to reinstall, I can mat mate that up with the, uh, the jack. I just want to work that in, make sure that we're in good condition there. We are, this turns freely. There was a little bit of grease on there. I'm going to assume that's the factory grease. So I'm just going to go ahead and use, in this case, I'm going to use Pen Precision Real Grease. Uh, it doesn't have to be Shimano, but it does have to be real grease in my mind. So just uh, light coating there from where it came. Okay. The rest of this seems relatively clean. Not relatively clean, very clean. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of oil on that, a little bit on the... the at the reverse clutch, a little bit on the bearing that's inside the case. We're going to set that aside. All right, next up then is these two screws. Don't lose those uh, screws, springs. Don't lose those springs. Before I ever pull any gears, I always take those springs off because they have a tendency to shoot. This reel has a dual uh, anti reverse uh, dog mechanism here. Uh, you just want to make sure the orientation of them. Notice that they're both pointing in the same direction. We have the jack, the yoke, and the spool gear, and we have the main gear assembly. So I'm going to take the main gear assembly off first. 
There's a little shim washer that goes on top of that ferrule. That's for the bearing shield on the back side of the case. And then we should be able to just lift. And then under. Okay, so as I mentioned, I was my oversight. I thought that I could access the spool from the other side. That's not the case. So uh, what I've gone ahead and done is just taken everything off. So you'll get a chance to see me put it all back on again, including the uh, the anti reverse drive. You have to take the stuff down to the core for the uh, side plate to come off and then what we can do is we can pull the four screws now in this case I don't know if I got a replacement screw or if it's just the way it is uh, but there was a flat headed screw I just put in the, the tray here there's a flat headed screw which came out of the bottom here which is different from the other three and that was a, kind of what I was talking about before in terms of knowing where your pieces and parts come from or go to uh, there probably is some kind of interference perhaps with a, a round headed screw or perhaps somebody may have served as this reel some time ago and lost the screw and came back and put that one in I don't know but uh, as long as you keep track of where that is uh, you shouldn't have any problems alright so I'm, I'm thinking that the two screws that are holding on the, the gear shaft here do not need to come off in order for the rest of this to come off so let's see and I am correct that's the back end of this now we can come into the spool and pull the spool out and you want to do that because you got two bearings in here and there's no sense uh, going ahead and uh, partially servicing a reel you want to get the whole thing done uh, put a little bit on the back here that's all it needed was just a drink of oil there it's clean inside so there's no uh, no panic there <laughs> while I do have it off there's a little bit of accumulated grease or something on the bottom here so we'll take care of that uh, this clicker looks a little oh, no, it looks I was gonna say it looks a little worn but it's just grease and speaking of grease we'll put a little bit onto that click mechanism just to make sure that that works nicely and then we can just go put it back together again so I uh, lessons learned here I guess I could have <laughs> I pulled the schematic I showed you that the schematic is available I probably should have looked at the schematic to see that uh, that the, the assembly has to be uh, moved from the inside but such is life okay so back to this then that's on the bearings are spinning nicely again we go ahead and take that main assembly then and load that in Make sure you line up all of the the holes for the screws and also the jab, the, the main shaft where it belongs. And now this is a little bugaboo of mine, me and small screws, but uh, we'll go ahead and get that done. This is where I usually tell my viewers go for coffee because I'm bound to drop those screws somewhere maybe we'll get lucky so nice reel right uh, if you've been looking at it it's a pretty simple design it's uh, high quality pieces and parts it's a smooth operator I don't know uh, what the cost is on these I would suspect probably 150 to 200 dollars uh, somewhere in that marketplace uh, but I wouldn't be surprised either way I guess I would be surprised lower, but uh, I can't say for certain. But it's the Trimano, Shimano Trinidad uh, 12A, which I believe is the smallest format for this reel. Okay, that's two. Here's that one that was a little bit different. And again, it may be that you need the clearance here for the gear. Maybe that's why this is a, a flathead screw. I don't know but I know where it belongs and I know that it's different so put that one in there and I did my best on this uh, anti-reverse here to keep it together so that um, when I go to put that back on we're going to have the proper orientation in it but again if you uh, if you lost track of that somehow, then what you want to do is you want to go back to the schematic 
and uh, reference that. Okay, we have already greased these up, so there's nothing more to do there except to reinstall. And when you reinstall, there's a fork on the end of this. Make sure you turn the uh, gear there to make sure that you have it seated properly with the spool. We didn't, I'm not sure if we talked about that earlier. All right, here's our assembly now for the anti-reverse. Now one has got a point on it, the other one is sitting on the point, so I guess it's kind of hard to screw those up, but worse has happened. And you also have a square here, so you need to make sure that the gear is firmly in place there. Now we need to move this back a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Should be good now. Pick up the main gear assembly here. Just going to lay these out. It's a big gear, so you can see it's a high speed uh, reel. A couple of plates on them. And these are in good condition. Just a little bit of over oiling on them, so we're just going to clean that oil off of it. looking for that extra and again we'll just take that off now these are HT 100 types of drags you can put a, um, a, a grease on there like a Cal's universal grease we'll go ahead and do that all right I'm just gonna put the first of the, the drag washers back on and I'm gonna grab the uh, main gear and assemble that if you want to do the same thing with the main gear I guess I should take it off and show you you want to check all of the teeth in that you also want to make sure that there's lubrication in there you don't have to put it in every tooth when that spins it'll spread the grease around because the two gears are different sizes so just make sure you get enough on there to make it a smooth operator this one was pretty good when it came in I did notice there was a little bit of roughness to it that's probably the lack of the grease that we're seeing here okay now we can go ahead and put the washers back in now if you do use these um, uh, types of washers, use a Cal's Universal or, or some other drag grease. Just spread it on, work it in the grooves, wipe it clean. First one up goes here. This one has a little bit of grease on it as well. So I, I just dip it into the, the grease bucket, wipe it clear. I believe these are carbon fiber, so you, you have an option, but the, that's the wrong one. That's the small one for up top. Uh, you do have an option with carbon fiber. You don't have to do anything there. But uh, if you do, just don't over grease them. This is the one that belongs in the middle. It's a little bit bigger. Put that last plate on there. And we have the other one of these we can put in. And then we can put in the top cap. And then we can find that cap washer, or furrow thinking of the washer for the plate and then this little bearing shield which the other one's going to ride on. So that's the internal mechanism that you're going to build this on and then we're going to put the two springs back in and then we can put the side plate on. Now I have that little stud opening up so I'm going to move that to the top and just see if we can kind of get it on the first shot. Usually it takes some time to properly align these. So 
Sounds like we got it. Okay, and then our bearing pressed out of the side case here, so we can go ahead and put a little bit of oil on that as well. And then we have those four side plate screws, so let's get those back in. I'll hold this case because the springs want to push this case out right now. So let's get those back in and hold that down. And again, this looks like it, to, it would be a Phillips head. It's not. So just take your time with this. I don't recommend using the mechanical screwdrivers. I just think there's too much torque, and only bad things seem to come from too much torque in fishing reels. You can warp the cases. You can crack the cases. I mean, this is aluminum. I don't think that would happen. The warping could happen. Let's just take our time here. And we have one more bearing shield that goes on the top of that bearing that we just oiled there. And then we can kind of reassemble here. That's a nice reel. It's, uh, it's a more of an upper end reel. This is a small format which seems to be taking over the, the fishing world these days. Small formats with braid as opposed to uh, larger formats for monofilament uh, because of the braids thickness you can load more on there and that tends to reduce down the size and the weight of reels. Okay here's that shield that goes on top of the bearing and then we have the series of washers that we took off and stacked on the side here. Notice two things these washers are concave they're not flat and these were face to face these give the drag adjuster uh, tension uh, and feel. It's all about how you want that to feel on your um, on your tightening, how much sensitivity you want to that. So I generally just put it back the way I found it, but you can go si uh, face to face or back to back or uh, side to side or flip them. And they all will uh, have an effect on the sensitivity of that. All right, now we're going to just put the, the nut that the star adjuster rides on. I'm just taking my time here. You got to get that set up right. If you don't get it set up right, you're going to cross strip and you can wind up buying a new main gear. So get it right, hand tighten it as much as you can. Make sure that that groove is up to accept the spring. Seat the spring. We had those two adjuster collars there. Let's go ahead and put that on. Make sure that you seat it down. You got to hold it now. I'm holding the two outside clips. There's one. There's the other. The two shim washers for the handle. The handle goes on next. Notice uh, when you took that handle off where it came out of it, happened to come out of the bottom one. There are uh, a high leverage and a low leverage piece of this. Just make sure that you, I mean, if it's your personal reel, doesn't matter. You can go kind of put it in however you want to put it in and play with it. If it's a customer's reel, notice where it came from because you want to give it back to them the way it came. Same thing here. You don't want to cross strip this cap wash, uh, cap nut. Make sure you're going on square. And then we can just put the just due diligence here. It doesn't feel like it's going on square. We're going to take this off. I'm going to try it again. It's 
hard to see because you're, you're, you're trying to do too many things right now. There we go. That's why I like to put them on with my hand as opposed to using a wrench. You get a much better feel for the way it goes. Now we're tight and now the, the handle looks much more square. Okay, and we just want to line that up. So we can get our little shield on there. And our little hold tight screw. Alright, give it a give it a quick crank. Oh boy, did that that smooth that right out. See? Squeaky wheels, I guess, huh? There we go. That's working nicely. Boy, that just tuned that up nicely. And the drags, we're just going to tighten down. Make sure we have full force on the drags, which we do. I'll back them off now just to kind of save them. So that's it. That's the, uh, the Shimano. It's the uh, Trinidad 12A. And uh, I know I buttoned this up. We're going to come back in. And uh, you have to take four side plate screws off. I didn't realize it at the time. Four screws underneath to get to the spool to, to do that bearing. Uh, we'll come back and do that in a moment.